What's up? What's up, Chris? What's up, Chuck? How you doing? <laughs> oh man, my voice is all fucked up, isn't it? Is there audio coming from this thing in the background? What's up, Julie? Did I, did I manage to make this work yet? Oh man, my audio is not working at all. Why not? What's going on? What happened? What happened? Um, okay. Well, huh. Why are you no worky? Oh, oh, maybe now? Oh. Oh, no video audio on the thing. Okay. We're good. My mixer has put my audio super bomb. Yo, you're not supposed to hear it. That's that's that's, that's good. This is a good thing. Um, Brett is <laughs> Oh wait. We do hear me or you don't hear me? I'm I'm mad confused now. This is great. Great content. Good job, boys. Good job, me. <laughs> what's up, Big Nick? What's up, Ulf? What's up, Brandon? Um, Brett is going to be joining me at some point. He uh, is still running class, I believe. So, uh, yeah, so he's not here. Um, so, yeah. In the meantime, you, I'm just going to talk to you myself. Uh, we're gonna go over uh, some stuff. I have a script here. There we go. Um, so today, uh, Brett's gonna come on at some point, and he's gonna talk about judo. He's gonna uh, make fun of striking, and generally have terrible opinions, um, unless they're my opinions, and then they're great opinions. But you know, that's just how it goes. Um, also, we'll trash some random things, get cool recommendations, and basically just watch a bunch of videos. Um, and get a different take because uh, he's a different fighter than I or Alex, who I usually have on for that. Um, we're also going to go over some news. There's some news that happened. First, training drill because I haven't done that in forever. Um, this is a good one. Uh, I really like um, if you have a BOSU ball or some sort of balance thing, I really suggest this. You, you put it down flat and you stand on it. This is you. And you do your strikes while standing on the rotating balancey thing. Uh, do a hundred strikes and sort of see how you how you fall off. See how your uh, what's up, Josh? How's it going? Uh, see how your balance changes. Uh, make sure you're really driving with that hip, getting the shoulder rotation, engaging your core. Um, it's a great way to find out if you're overreaching on your strikes, um, particularly on a pole arm strike. Um, and whether you're in good balance. If you find yourself falling forward or on the recovery, falling back and having to overcorrect, you're not uh, honestly in good balance when you're throwing even on flat ground. Um, so, so yeah, do your strikes on a BOSU ball. Um, that's your training drill. Um, all right, we're gonna do Bohurt News now. Um, this weekend, the Knights Hall has a night fight on Saturday night. Uh, I'm gonna be fighting. Um, the card right now is Mikey versus Brandon uh, with Falchions and Shields Megan versus Marie I don't know what they're fighting with Xander versus Gavin uh, I don't know what they're fighting with Xander's a new fighter None of you guys might not really know him um, but he's been he's been doing the Knights Hall stream so if you've been watching the streams it's the guy who had the dreads there um Kate versus Colton, uh, another new fighter. I don't actually know Colton. Um, Ringo, that's me, versus Cat, where we're going to be doing Falchions and Shields as well. Jack versus Liam. Uh, Tony and Chuck, and they're going to be fighting with great swords. 
Um, and then Dustin versus Brian. Uh, so that's going to be Dustin. Oh, man, I can't remember his name. But, like, the new Dustin, not the shitty old Dustin. Um, versus Brian Durante. Um So, yeah, that's a pretty good card. I'm really excited for that last fight. That last fight's going to be dope. Um, Gunnarsson. Yeah, Dustin Gunnarsson. It doesn't help they're both G's. Um, what's the NYC gym? Uh, that's Sword Class, um, at New York City. That gym isn't there anymore. Rip, rip Sword Class. Um, Quadzilla versus the Smiling Assassin. Yes. Um, also this weekend, Winter Camp, uh, for, uh, is happening, um, in Texas. I'm kind of sad I didn't know about that till after I, uh, planned my um planned my texas trip so i'm missing winter camp yet again even though it's you know almost summer by the time winter camp happens but hey you know it is so that's gonna be dope hopefully we get some good video coming out um yes there was a rookie rumble prep this past weekend um uh if you didn't go to that you missed out um so this is some great training there. Um, Rookie Rumble, speaking of, is next weekend, finally. Um, it's coming up. It's dope. Um, there's also uh, something that and you can catch that on the Night's Hall stream, um, much like the fight this weekend you can catch on the Night's Hall stream. Um, Night's Hall, Twitch at Night's Hall or something. I don't fucking know. Um, there's a, a there's a Ren Festival that weekend as well in Siouxland. Sioux I don't I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, but yeah, somewhere in the Midwest, there's a also a thing next weekend. So that's great. Lots of fighting happening everywhere. And June chapter matches are starting back up. We got two at least on the schedule already. So that's fucking dope. Um, and in depressing news, uh, AMCS has officially lost their insurance, which may be uh, indica indicative that ACS and ACW will soon be following them. I uh, haven't heard any confirmation on that yet, but um, there was, uh, it's, it's very possible that uh, people will be shopping for new insurance soon, or maybe there'll just be an announcement on switching over. We don't know, um, but AMCF is officially no longer insured, and they're looking for new insurance. Um, so let's all hope that gets handled. Um, yeah, uh, Brett is on his way home. He says he'll be there uh, at eight fifty his time, so that's like twelve minutes. So, um, so in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna send a thank you to Josh uh, Kearney and the uh, the guys at the Iron Lions team. So uh, last weekend I went down uh, to Virginia to train with Josh at Ironhide Academy. It was uh, dope. I got my ass smashed um, by a bunch of high-level jiu-jitsu fighters. And then uh, then we did uh, Bohurt training, um, and it was a very good class. Uh, worked on some cool stuff, worked on some nice grappling, some, ba some very good basic grappling, and then went into, um, uh, into some pro fight uh, training where I got to practice um, some stuff that I've been trying to work on. Just tried to show me uh, some low kicks. I'm not very good at them. Um, I need to do a lot of work on that. Um, so that's the thing that I need to do. Uh, was good on that. Um, Iron Lions. And then we um, then there was a prep the next day, uh, and the Iron Lions uh, had the Pine Barrens down as well. Uh, it was a great event. Sun tried to kill everybody. Um, yeah. It was a great event. Um. Reminds me that if you uh, are fighting in the heat, you really got to learn how to handle uh, watering yourself. Um, it's uh, We lost so many fighters. Uh, well, we didn't lose them. We had a medical staff making sure no one got overheated, but there was it was close. Um, so you just got to know, know how to pace yourself. You got to know how to be drinking water constantly, constantly trying to cool yourself. Whether you think you need water or not, you should be drinking water. Whether you think you're cool or not, you should be trying to cool yourself down. Um, that's the way to handle super hot events. Um, it was uh, a good reminder uh, that that's some information that doesn't often get passed on and that like people don't really understand how bad armor can get in the heats um, and how sneaky it can be because you don't really realize it's happened and then, then it did. Um, 
So hopefully, uh, the Iron Lions learned that lesson. Super excited to see what they have uh, when they come up to uh, to Rookie Rumble. Um, the Pine Barons. Hopefully, they learned that lesson too. Super excited to see what they have. Yeah, having dedicated uh, Krups, Krups, I don't know what I have it's pronounced. Having dedicated heat and hydration is uh, is key. Um, but you can do it actually shooting from the hip, provided you just have enough water. Um, if you have enough water and you're constantly just pouring it down the back to cool that down, um, cooling down the your armpits and your groin, you can you can stay cool. And really, it's mostly just about drinking water, staying in the shade, and resting. Um, if you don't have shade and you don't have water and you don't have a way to keep the water cool, then you you probably are fucked. But like, if you can have water, something to keep your water cool and shade, you can make it work. Um, but that said, get a, get a support staff who can constantly give you water so that you can just be sitting and resting. That's It's so key. Um, good support is super, super important. Oh, oh, I think Brett might be joining us. All right. Let's, let's see if I can make this work. Uh, do, 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 do. I gotta kill this video first. Deactivate. And I gotta go over here and start this video. Oh, I, I gotta kill. Zoom. Let's start again. Okay. Oh. We got that working. This looks so weird. Sorry, guys. I uh, my scene's all fucked up. I thought Brett said he was home, so he should be coming in. Uh, does anyone have thoughts on what we want to watch right now? We're gonna watch uh. Carnage. Uh, uh, we're going to watch the Steel Bear Cup. Um, yeah, that looks kind of okay. Bah! So zoomed. Wah. Here, let's do that. I don't. Brett, you said you were joining me, and then you didn't. And you lied. Lied. Okay, I'm just gonna have to fix this on the fly. He lied. He said he was home and he's not home. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're gonna be watching. Um, I can't show you. I don't have that up. Uh, probably a bunch of pro fights um, from WMCF. Um, we're going to be watching The Burn Cup, uh, Partisan. We're going to be looking at Partisan as much as possible. Uh, Dynamo from 2020, uh, White Company Western Tower, Bear Paw vs. Old Friends, uh, White Company vs. Aquila. And then we're going to go look at Carnage, of both of the Carnages um, last year and the year before um, to look at some of the high-level U.S. and kind of compare what's going on. Um, so yeah anyone if you guys want to see something not one of those let me know tell me what you guys want to see what, what type of videos do you want to watch uh and have us break down because we can do that no no one's got it. no one has any ideas no one cares what we're watching okay well that's fine. Uh, who's going to Rookie Rumble? Who Who's going to be there? Porn? We are not going to break down porn. Turns out you're not allowed to put porn on Twitch. I w I'm saddened by this, but it's just the way it w is. Josh is coming to Rookie Rumble. Josh, you're not. You're not a rookie. Nice. Nice. Wolf's going to be there. We got Wolf coming. Julie's going to be commentating, I believe. Oh, we got some viewers. This is dope. This is dope. 
glad to see people there. I'll be there. Uh, you can come say hi. Uh, I'm not going to be fighting. I'm probably going to be helping out. Um, so, yeah. If you want to come say hi to me as I don't do anything useful, you can. Oh, Julie's commenting the night fight. Okay. Oh, so you can catch Julie tomorrow. Oh, did I see? No. Nope. I thought I saw something happen. Ugh. Brett, you're killing me. Yeah, sure. What do you want us? What do you want me to watch, Josh? Tell me what's up. I'll I'll break down something for you. You know what? I don't want to hear it, Julie. It's been a long day. I don't know how time works. I've never known how time works. You should know this. Uh... Josh, what do you want me to watch? You can't just say that and then not provide anything. All right, well, I'm just gonna start doing this uh, pole arm thing while, oh, hey, he got the link. Do, 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 do. How do I turn this on? Beep, beep, beep. Where's... Got to do a new capture. This is some bullshit. Everything was so fucking set up already. Oh, maybe this. There we go. Oh. Can you just be like slightly wider? Yeah, there you go. All right, here we go. We're gonna watch Tidewater Dogs. Ooh, I don't need that. That was a little loud. Tidewater Dogs of War. Ah, uh, you can't see my face anymore. Versus the Iron Lions five v five scrimmage. Let's do it. <laughs> I want the ref's hat. He should give me that hat. He doesn't need that. Okay. Um. So right off the bat, this is something I don't like. Um. Hey, you can see my my little mouse. Um. This fighter right here, we can see them looking, trying to find out what's happening in their corner, like. We've already taken a couple steps in. You shouldn't be. You don't need to watch what your corner guy's doing. Uh, you should have talked that out um, and have faith in them. I know the Tidewater guys are new, so they haven't really figured that out. But um, you, at least you have an idea of what your plan is. So that's a little problematic. Um, and if that was like looking for the sign of when to go, you're just you're letting them know. So like, don't do that. Um, People are going to be paying attention to you. Also, this is... I know it's hard to run in armor, but... Like... Do better? <laughs> um, like, you never see them speed up past that, which means they're not really either practicing in their armor um, to learn how to get their legs to get the mobility. Uh, they don't have the drive strength. Again, they're not practicing in their armor to get that drive strength. Um, or more likely, they're just not comfortable running fast. Um, and so, like, we should see here this should be slow, but here they should be a little bit quicker. Um, but we're not. And, like, as the axe comes, this fighter turns into the axe and slows down. A penetrating run needs to be penetrating, right? Like... You're trying to get to the back of the list. Run as hard as you can to the back of the list. Um, 
So that's the first thing that I'm just seeing is this initial opening. Um, it's just not great. <laughs> um, this guy, this guy can run. I like that. That was dude. This guy should have set that off. They're center. Um, fuck, not that. That's the wrong term. They're third man. The third man should have set this off, right? Um, this run is nice, but if instead of coming at Damian, who we see right here, um, pivot. Oh, uh, yes, that's the term. Instead of uh, if the pivot had uh, instead of ran here, just run into this open space here. Um, that does one of a few things. It it pull forces Damian to either engage him away from where he wants to, so he can no longer choose which target he wants. Um, I think this is Damian. What? That's Eric. He looks so tall. I, you guys told me that was the thing, and now he looks tall on the list. I can't tell heights in armor. All right. So, uh, if Eric, um, it forces Eric to uh, to pick, so that he has to either come over here and start the three on two. But these, this guy's in a pretty good position. Uh, it'll take longer, but, but that would allow the tide of war to set up something here. Plus, if Eric turns his back. He could just come back over and hit him again. So running into this space, it creates a lot of options. Um, pusher runs faster than I expected for his size. Bash me in the face. Is Pusher the guy right here with the face pa painted? Um, either way, uh, this is. I think the correct run is into this space, um, and that's a concept that a lot of people have trouble with uh, in Bohurt. In my experience, they. Um, they think that you have to run at your opponent, right? So he ran right at this guy who was facing him. Uh, his back's on the back of the list. There's nothing that happens there. Um, if you're not down fighters, you don't need to be frantic. Assume your team is okay unless you can see otherwise, right? If you see your buddy over there is about to fall down, go run and help them out. But otherwise, or like if you see they have a takedown, um, <laughs> if you see that they have a takedown, go help them out. But otherwise, running to space creates options, and it forces your opponent to react. And anytime you're forcing your opponent to react, you're a little bit better off, because that means they're not dictating the pace of the action. Um, it's one of the great things uh, about being aggressive, It's but it's not the only way. Being aggressive isn't the only way to force people to do that. Oh-ho! And Brett is here. All right. Let's see if I can make this less shitty. Uh, boop. Hey, what's hey, up, what's up, man? How are you? Good. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, can you guys hear Brett? Is that coming through? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, cool. Audio's good. Fixing the video. Um, Brett, do you have Chrome on your computer? I do have Chrome. I forgot to ask. Can you install uh, a Chrome? add-on called YouTube Party. This allows us to watch at the same time uh, and like pause stuff together. YouTube Party. Yeah. Yeah. Dope. Um, so I was practice. You look real sweaty. Right, man. We had <laughs> so many people there. So we've got a couple of people who are in from out of town because they went to the duels camp in Houston and have just like stayed for the week. Nice. Uh, but because of that, I think a lot of people are coming out. We've got some new people out. We had like close to 10 women at practice today. Like that's badass. Dude, that's yeah. That's more than most fighters have at their whole practice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> Uh, they've been killing it recently. They've been training hard. It's awesome. There is there is often more women at our practice than men. Ooh. Ooh. So. Nice. To get your extension done. What is the saying? Do okay. I want to turn on sync? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I think I have it. I think it's All done right. now. Well, wait, let's find out. I'm going to send you a link. All right. Um, and then, uh, where's my Zoom chat? How do I see what chat says? Do I need to just pull up you, uh, Twitch on the side? Yeah, that's you get like you can pull up on your phone. Um, you can pull it up and like just pull up. There's a way to just pull up chat, or you can pull up and just mute it. Whatever, okay. Whatever you want to do, or I'll like tell you some of the stuff. Like Chris says that you're rocking the wet look. 
Well, thank you. <laughs> um, did you get that link? Did it work? Where did you send it to? I sent it to you uh, in the Zoom chat. I'm actually just... oh, God, I don't know how this works. All right. I guess I did. Cool. Okay, cool. Um, I, I also put it in the Twitch chat, but... Cool! Oh, no, that's Josh K. That's not you. <laughs> All right, I think I'm in. Brad has joined the party. Sweet. Um, what did I just do? No! I went to the wrong thing. How do I put this in theater mode? That's not theater mode. I want theater mode. There we go. Yeah, I got it. All right. Um, cool. All right, so... Uh, I just grabbed a bunch of pro fights because um, oh, yeah. you said that was your thing. And then I also have a couple of 5v5s from um, Dynamo that I'd like to look at. And then maybe we'll grab, if we have time, a Partisan 1 fight to look at because Partisan is dope. And then yeah. uh, I have... They're really, they're what? really different. I really like Partisan 1 because they do... They do the world meta, but they they do it in partisan one way, which is really neat. I love that. Well, so he, what I think, I mean, yes, but I think it is, is the world looks at partisan one and goes, we want to do that, but then like misses half of the subtleties of what they're doing. Um, See, I think the world copies Bear Paw style way more than partisan one. All right. Like Bear Paw is like kind of the like, that's what most people look like. Partisan one is unique. I think I would not, they would not be that unique if everyone was copying them. Like they just have random people just standing back in the middle of nowhere. And he was like, what's, what's that guy doing? Like what's, what's happening here? Yeah. Um, it's, he's, he's being a, a really far back third man or pivot. <laughs> it's, it's almost always the middle guy who does it. Um, sometimes it's it's the guy off the side, but it's almost always the middle. All right. Um, so this is uh, Bo Bohemil from uh, White Company versus, I don't know, Gorayun Artem. Um, but we'll see. Uh, it looks like he's from Burn, probably. Yeah. This will uh, uh, be a good one, hopefully. Oh. oh wait i forgot before we do this is trash talk so you need to trash something before when we start we we talk about something we hate and why we hate it oh man so i'll i'll, uh, I'll give you uh, you got something are you ready i got one all right uh, just because grappling. I hate anyone who double grips and bear hugs someone with an axe. Period. <laughs> it's, it's a trash move. It's absolute garbage. And every time I see it, there's like three reasons that you would ever use it. And all of them are like, two of them are you fucked up and you're trying to save yourself until you can get back to a different position. Yet it's the go-to move every two-handed axer uses who doesn't know how to grapple. Accurate. Accurate. Yeah. So you hate the people who do it, not even just the move? Like, if someone does it, just, no, I hate you. You're done. Get out of my sport. You know. <laughs> All right, maybe I hate the move. <laughs> nope. And Too late. I got it. Someone's the already clipped The fact it. that they like the move... Maybe I judge them a little Maybe. bit. <laughs> is, is that good trash talk? Does that work? Yeah, that's great. That's fucking amazing. Um, mine is stupid. I hate fucking tendonitis. Fuck tendons. They're oh. the worst. Tendons should die. We should get rid of them. Um, we should just dude. all have weird steel, uh, like na <laughs> flexible nanobot steel. Science, why haven't you done this yet? Uh, why? Why well, can't get a replacement joint, but not replacement tendons? This is stupid. Damn. Get I feel it. you. I feel you. <laughs> I have so many issues with tendonitis. And for like six months now, my fucking neck, like it <laughs> heals. And then like, I'll get one weird snap down. And then it, like I got a, I earlier today in judo, it's been feeling great. And I don't even know when it happened. I just got done with judo and I'm like, oh, my neck's fucked up again. <laughs> uh, and it's probably going to be like this going into winter camp, which means it's only going to get worse during winter camp. And then in a couple of weeks, 
three weeks from now, I'm sure it'll feel good again. And then someone will snap my head down one time and I'll decide to come back. You know the solution to that, right? Don't get snapped down. That's uh... is, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let's get into this. Uh... Let's do it. Our, mine's just going. Oh, what? I paused it. It was supposed to pause. All right. Did it go back for you? No, no, it didn't. Oh, um, what the fuck? All right. Well, let's try this again. Oh, I don't know that I'm. You left the party. To, it says you left the party. party. Why'd you? What did you do? You gotta go click the link again. All right. You're not in the party anymore. I'm All back. Right. I'm back. You're back. All right. Let's do it. Oh, Josh says he has some exercises you can do for your neck pain if you want. Um, uh, I'm t- I'm totally down. I got uh I got an iron neck along with some other stuff that I've been doing. <laughs> And it it works. It's helpful, but there's always like I'll go a, a decent ways without any issues, and then something happens, and it's like it'll be like a month of no pain, then something happens, and it bothers me for two weeks, and then a month good, two weeks. I've been doing it for maybe eight, I don't know, maybe a year. It's been a while. It's it's the same side, same place every single time. Uh, Craig just snapped the shit out of my head one time. It's never been the same again. No, He's got them big man paws yeah don't let craig grab you are you checking out fucking uh this helmet that yeah, Artem it's has? really weird <laughs> uh, first I don't off know what it is i don't believe that that shaping <laughs> i've ever seen um but also like that's like a full face visor at the top level that's like he doesn't even seem to have extra holes like and that that slit is tiny it's just it's wild Maybe maybe we're we we don't need this vision. We're all just a bunch of. <laughs> well, that was an interesting shot. That little uppercut. Did you see him throw that little uppercut? No. Let's go back. Let's go uh, back. That's the whole point just... of this: is that you can I, I you can did. control it and go to where it was. All right. Can I do it? Yeah. Yeah. We're so both in this. control. All right. Hold on. That's. The... All right. I think it's. <laughs> it looks like a I don't thumb. Know. It, it's. <laughs> It does kind of look like a thumb. All right, let's see. I think it's right here. Uh, oh, never mind. I went back way too far. It's in 10 seconds. Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. So no one's really right scored at this point. Look oh, yeah. A fucking Unterhau thing? Yeah, it's like, it's like it's almost like a legit Unterhau. I guess it's the first time I've ever seen someone throw like a legit Not, Unterhau. Right yeah. there. And it's to the hand. It's kind of beautiful. I think that scores. I think that's to his knuckles. Even if not, so dirty tricks um, that I've been practicing in soft kit uh, is to do that. Uh, it's instead of doing an underhand like that, though, it's the overhand to the back of the shield. But like that would still work. Like you come, up, you can come in and then bop, turn that into an offside. Now that you're inside of the shield, or hit a lefty in the hands. Yeah. All of those are terrible things. Don't hit people in the hands. But like, learn how to in case you hate your opponent. <laughs> I don't. I don't believe in that shit. Hit him in the hands all fucking day. That's that's my one rule uh, for stuff that's legal. Everything else, I'm like compl- completely down. So it's because we- you wear. It's because you wear gretters. It sucks balls getting hits in the hand with gretters. I just got gretters. It's because I I understand how shitty gauntlets are. Didn't Most you have? People, didn't you have uh, the scales? Scale my scales. It? I had no issues in my scales. Everyone else did though. I've never had issues getting hit in the hands and gauntlets, but That's I still fair. don't hit people in the hands and gauntlets because I've seen so many fucking people get fucked up. I've got I've got gauntlets that ground out specifically so that I, I don't have to deal with it. I I always get mildly irritated when people are like, I wear scale and you should never hit people in the hands. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure you feel that way. I feel I feel it. I felt it the whole time. I felt it in everything. Right. It's just like and also I I do not have a problem getting hit in my gretters. They feel fine. Unless it's right. half half on getting hit in the half has always been worse. Like I have a half and you have a half and that Oh yeah. Somehow that's worse with every gauntlet I've ever used. I don't know. It's, if it's the swing, it's because that head is so far past, so it like really drives in. Um So that that undershot, I'm still thinking about that. Like the other like as I it it also like it's gonna fuck up your guard and make you move your hand back. So I think it's just a setup too. Like, hey, let me like throw this in because right afterwards he threw two straights right down. Um, yeah, it's just like a a weird throwaway shot. You're not really in danger, and then hey, maybe this 
open something up. I'm going to be honest. I'm surprised with how big these guys are that they're so willing to just like one or one, two, and then stay at range. And it's possible that both these guys are real high-end grapplers. Uh, Boa Mill definitely uh, is. Right. And the other guy's got the bear paw patch <laughs> on his sleeve. So. so... <laughs> uh, but... Yeah. It's also, these are three minute rounds. Yeah. Are you. Yeah. It's miserable. Like, I mean, it's probably no different than running five two minute rounds. Like, it's a little It's way different. It's way different. So, because the third, like, around a minute and a half is when you start to tip, like, go down. So, at two and a half minutes, you're basically gassed. That last 30 seconds trying to put something together is terrible. Um, Versus, you get to the third round. And you're still like probably good for the first like minute of that. I haven't done three threes, but I would imagine you get to yeah. the fifth round of twos. Like even just getting out, you're like, I don't want to get off this stool. I don't, I don't want to do yeah. it. <laughs> oh, Hey, here's imagine. the grapple. Yeah, there we go. So was your th- point that with the one and two is that you wanted to see them throw one or two and then switch into the grapple or just that they aren't throwing combos. I was just surprised it got that this deep into the round before seeing this. And I'm also surprised that they're like not complaining about that hooking the rail. Um, but I thought that's a new was, rule though. Right. Cause like I never I've, heard of it till you guys were calling it. And I, every time I've seen it, someone does something like that. And this why, so I tell our ref to be kind of lenient with it because like once they read the rules, they're all like, Oh, y'all cheat all the time. And I'm like, like, just make sure the fight stays good. Like, you're really <laughs> just trying to make it a good fight. Yeah. If one dude's just holding onto the rail to not, not let you throw him, then you need to say something about it. If they're both kind of resting and hitting each other, I don't care if someone's hand goes down Ooh. over the rail. Did you see that sexy low kick? Yeah. He did a couple of them just as like, and it's almost to the cap. I think it's almost yeah. just a, a maybe he'll trip because that's not a that's not a point scoring move. What? Like he's trying to not... Un- under the knee because you're allowed to block with your shins. Oh, okay. I was telling someone you can't. I, I, I got. Go it's to just that. not worth points. You yeah, can, no, you no. I was telling someone it. you couldn't yeah. block with your shins. Like if someone threw a kick and you raised no. your shin to like block, but it turns no, out you can't. With, same thing with forearms. What? Forearms, they call it a block. All right. So hold up. If someone throws a shot and I'd like I ward it with my forearm, like a fucking kick. A, kick. It's kick. only kicks. Okay. Yes. You also can't block a sword with your shin. Okay. But you can block kicks with your. I'm just like, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah. Um, I have this fucking. I'm interested to see if they start picking this up. I like now that we're moving around too. I'm wondering because of like these rounds are so long. If like I do the same thing with my first round, a lot of times I'm like, can we like, can I really ride this out and just eke out a win and then try to start pushing it when my person gets tired? Yeah. Um, Croops, this is the WMFC pro fight rules, not the HMB pro fight rules. Um, it's the same. Two minutes. But, two versus so, three. No, so, th- okay. you're allowed to change it. Three, what, it used to be threes of pro fight and twos of first class fight. And then they were like, we realized that most of y'all don't like three. And so they gave you the right to still call it a pro fight and change oh how long God, it I is. fucking hate it. I hate it. I try so hard not to say anything shitty. I'm just not gonna happen. I'm gonna, it's go, I'm gonna explode. I don't, I don't hate it because I hate ooh, three minute rounds. What happened there? Ooh, ooh, let's back it up. Yeah, I, I'm trying. I'm failing. I think no, he's got case grief, so it can't be a calf shot. That's. I wonder. There's no way he hits him actually behind the knee. Ah, oh, God, I hate that it switches camera angles right as it happens. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Uh, he's limping bad, whatever it was. I mean, the way they're breaking almost sounds like he had to have hit an illegal shot. Yeah. You wouldn't think that... Well, that's also, like, if you look at the Greaves, it, do- it can't be that he came in the calf and i doubt getting hit in the back of the thigh like is gonna hurt that much um 
Like that's it's meaty. Like you have to get it really All hard right. to shut that down. This bear paw guy's in a real good place to start uh, winning this grapple. I'm interested to see what he does. <laughs> oh, they push into that. Nice. Can he get postured up? No. The way the like when they close, the way he got control of uh, the white company guy's arms and got his grips, there was like no way that white company was going to win that grapple. All right, let's 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 go over that then. All right. I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're talking about. So you see when he pushes in, boom, he's going to trap the shield. Yeah, there we go. He traps it's that right. and then goes over that shield. So he's got like both arms trapped down. Right. Uh, and that's just like a really strong position, especially if he's going to go for a pulling trip, which is what he tries right there, but he can't. But then you can normally reverse that into – so he would like to get this trip and make him fall down backwards. When the guy turns, you can then basically press your chest into him like that, but they right. got caught up on the rail. The rail. Um. So basically just one overhook and then you kind of just are going for wrist control almost? So he's doing, he basically got double over, but he got double over where he was still had pressure down on top, which is really nice. Um, so the guy can't really swing and it gets easy to, like, because his hands are, like, if the other guy could get his hand driven up underneath and, like, free, where he's right. like actually in his armpit, then he could yeah. fight it. But because his hands are down, he's really just got nothing in the grapple until he yeah. does his free. Oh. Oh, wow. They're starting them in the same... Yeah. Thing. That's nice. It's kind of neat. So your point about the about the ref, the thing that I have always said, you, um, you're talking about, you're trying to get your refs to... Um... Oh, what? That's a fucking single. That's a straight <laughs> single. Holy shit, yeah. that. That... That is the first time I've actually seen a single leg work. That's awesome. Now I gotta start training one. And he goes knee on belly. belly straight across. Oh, I mean, he stands back that's, up. That's all right. I like. I honestly, I like being stood up. I think if when you're stood up, there's so little shit the person on the ground can do. The knee on belly is nice, especially when you're like trying to posture up. Yeah. But if you can stand, I mean, if you can stand, it's like they can start to escape, and like, yeah, they're gonna eat. It's too. so hard to actually get up in full armor if I'm like, because I can knee you. Like, yeah. what are you gonna try? Okay, start trying to get up. I'll drive a knee through you, knock you back down. Like, yeah. I can score a lot of points because it's it's really about how many points can I score in ten seconds? Right? Yeah, and I, me standing, maybe uh, I get a lot normally. I also, I mean, like, that is one of the things that I really dislike about this, too, is that it is just about scoring and, like, not about, like, hurting the other person. Um, Man, I... What? I, I go back and forth. I wish, I, like, I like the brutality of it. The truth is, is the armor's so good. Like, what... what you're gonna have trouble stopping. Like, are you just complaining that they don't let you hit in the armpit? Oh no, 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 no. In uh, general, in general, in general. in general. Like, it, well, because let's your point about standing up is that in general, standing up gives you more options on what you can throw to. But like, yeah. it doesn't necessarily. Like, sometimes it could give you more power, but particularly with the things they've taken out, not really. Yeah. Right? Like, you right. can't stomp them in the chest. Um, yes. Which would be dope. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, it'd be really cool if I was the one standing. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's what you gotta, <laughs> um, Julie asks, are people doing doubles in armor? Um, I've done one before. They're, they're tough. Uh, we had someone attempt one in a pro fight not too long ago and they got taken down. Uh, I like the idea of it, uh, but the theory of it has always been better than the actual application so far. I feel like you would need to change your equipment for it a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. I think you probably want, like, I, even this is a sword is annoying to getting singles. And, like, the way I, like, I don't think you can really get the shield through. So, like, the way to get a single is either you end up there, lucky, or you sort of sneak the sword between the leg. You um, might be able to like high crotch if you stab it through. Yeah, like if I, you fuck that up. I I was trying to work that with uh, with a buddy. I was like, he was like, my my go to is a single, and I'm like, okay, let's try this weird thing that might. <laughs> right. Um. 
It's also worth noting that I have a shit single out of armor, so it's hard to tell. <laughs> like, I can be like, yeah, it doesn't work for me in armor, but also it yeah. doesn't seem to work but for me ever. So I think the double, like, I think the shield's going to be a little bit too, uh, too cumbersome. Um, like, I, I think for that, you either go buckler or nothing, um, and then try to sort of, oh, you can't grab your fucking blade again. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Oh, you can. Yes, you can. They just, they right, just right, 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 right. Change that. For yeah. four pro fights, you can. All right, yes. I'm back in. I'm so back in for that. Um, uh, Chris from Steel Trigger Media wants to know what your thought is. Did you read my thing on, uh, on using a dag like a dagger simulation to do a coup de coup de, coup de whatever like it to so I, I here's my big thing i think it's interesting if there was a tournament i would do it but my general thought on most of that is i'm really into like the sport aspect and like i came from a larp where we did all sorts of games right like what's a fun game let's do it I'm really drawn to the idea that this is a competition that I can compete internationally in and like I can really go everywhere. And so for me, I want to train the sport. I mean, Um, so I guess the question though is, do you like, do you think that that rule set would be interesting in the sport? Um, Yes. Yes. Like, and and not necessarily that, but some way of, some way of adding better finishing that's just the be, best I've come up with. I would be interested to see it. I would like there to be a little bit more of a ground game, especially as now that we've been drilling it a lot. It's just so much fun. Yeah. I wish I wish we had 15 seconds on the ground that's what or I'm maybe saying. 20. I think any more than that would not be. Good. I think I think just go with the same rules that we have um uh the same rules that we have in um where if it's just inactive, stand them up. Like you get three three to five seconds of inactive, and if someone just is fucking throwing bombs on you, like that that can start leading to finishes. I think if you if you just sit there and keep standing up and getting fucking bombs thrown on you, yeah, you'll probably be like, nah, I'm out, I'm out. And like, I want more finishes. I want finishes. I I agree, and I think it depends. One of the, one thing that kind of sucks about throwing bombs on someone on the ground is that they're smart. If you just set your head back on the ground, sure, it stops doing anything. Yeah. Um, so, which means you got to find somewhere else to do it. Um, but like, I love throwing to the body. If I can stand over someone's head facing towards their feet, it is my favorite place to strike from. Yeah. If you can, if you can get like, especially if they have a, a front closing uh, brig or something, and you can mm-hmm. get and throw straight down into that. Um, yeah, that sounds that sounds awesome. Um, I mean, my, my favorite place to throw is liver floating rib area and i will throw it straight into the brick like yeah. i don't care that there's not a, a split because if you hit it right i've i've dropped probably three people now with it but a whole bunch of people have at least bent over slightly. yeah like it, most of the time it doesn't do much but it's like one of those shots that every now and then like they're just i mean that's like, that's the true it's the truth of all of the heavy shots right like um you, you hit someone with a puller most of the time it doesn't do anything all right I want to see the so Bolo Mill is like limping. I'm surprised he's able to get this posture in this position. He's barely able to move, and he somehow gets range. Like that kick, I feel like should have got the guy free, and he's somehow pushed up against there. What like? Do you think he like wanted that or? He, I mean, it looks like he just pushed straight in. Honestly, at the end of the last round, Artem was like gasping for air. Artem beat him in the grapple bad this last round, but it felt like he just... I, I feel like out. Artem's dying now. Yeah. Uh, I uh, like, might be wrong. We'll see what he goes, but... Yeah, he's he just gets stuck on the... Yeah, it's gotta be. He's just, like, standing there. He's not even rolling out. Yeah, and he... And Artem, in every other round, Artem has won the grapple, and right. now he's just... He's getting put in bad position. Just back and getting brutalized, so... All right. That's that... It's that nice thing about going longer. I don't. I don't. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is not nice the right place to be. He's yes. Going, but yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's the correct answer. Uh, Bo- uh, Bohemil also looks tired. There's like nothing on a lot of this. Oh, that, that doesn't good. matter. That's it's. Points. That, that, I mean, like I he, know it's points. It's he points. pretty much just won this round. Yeah, like that. 
As but if he, he but he lost, down, but he lost, he lost two, and didn't he yes. lose one too? And, and and it's a it's how many rounds you win, right? It's not total points, or is it? No, total it's total points, but it's oh. it's total points, but it's set in a weird way. Okay, I don't remember how it was in in this, but it is total points based okay. on. I think it's a five point must system back here and what <laughs> what uh, math, math. <laughs> well, artem artem gets on top we'll see if he can actually strike it all it doesn't look like it looks like golden mills just got him oh, just, just the you can throw uh, knees from there though he could have thrown some knees i will tell you for anyone who's trying pro fight anytime someone traps your arm start just teeing up with that back knee and start throwing you will be shocked how often you can score plenty of points and people will quickly let go of you because you if, land knees if you land a knee on the ass that doesn't count for points right but it's still legal i, I don't know it's definitely legal because i because no one that. has good ass protection and i'll bet they let go of you if you just start god i bet it sucks i bet if you put one right in the tailbone Woo, it's a little spin <laughs> No, it's not a good one though. Um, what's up, Bear? What's up, Paul? Thanks for coming in, Coops. Thanks for the subscribe. Um, I, w <sighs> this fucking jar keeps getting filled up. Thank you, Julie. I don't know what to do about it though. Like, I should do something special. Um, someone suggest what to happen next time this jar gets filled up with bits. I'm trying to get my stream shit going better. I'm bad at it. Did he just fall? Is he that I, tired? I think he was trying to do like a not. A, it's. Like a Tanya Toshi. I think he's trying to hook that and fall down with him. It's not oh. a Tanya Toshi, but it's close to, and I think he just fails. Yeah. Um, because he's exhausted. Yeah. He just wanted to do the fall down jutsu. Got it. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, well, that's forehead. that right. <laughs> it's the power of cardio because Artem took it to him and then just couldn't keep going. Yeah, oh, it, they might have another round. Yeah, they're oh. making him fight a fourth round. Jesus. Holy fuck. And that's probably because he fucking... Uh, no, oh, no. Okay, no. okay. Uh, oh, what? Oh, this is the replay. Okay. Yeah, look at it. He's just... He's not even picking up his sword arm. He's just yeah, exhausted he's at this just point. Tired. So... Is the two rounds enough to win? I don't. Know. This is the thing. I, I don't. I don't really understand the the real meta of their rules. It's. I just. I really want it to be the guy who beats the shit out of the other guy always wins. <laughs> Which yeah, in this, it's, it's not even in boxing yet. So I know he, because he won the first two rounds. Yeah, but like I feel like Boamil probably should have got that. All right, let's. Uh, Ooh, Marson, but not the Marson I like. Um, I feel like uh, while I while I hear you, I think in every combat sport in the world, he wins that round or he wins that fight because he maybe. takes the first two rounds. Maybe, maybe he goes ten nine ten nine. I mean, that was a ten eight, nine ten. ten nine ten nine ten eight, right? Which, yeah, like that's that might gets the draw, but he kind of dominated the second round, so it's hard to say. <sighs> Got like takedowns and beat on him. He definitely, got, he definitely got dominated harder in the third round than he did than he won in the second round. I that's that was my feeling on it. Um, Julia should collect a bunch of dares and put them on a little piece of paper and put them in a jar when Steinfeld's draw ones. So that sounds great, except I'm never gonna remember to do the dares. So if you want to gift me a jar full of dares, <laughs> I'm in. Um, this is Mor Michael Morgales versus, uh, Visivold? Visivold Vazislav? Man, I gotta get better at Russian if I'm gonna keep doing this sport. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna do this one, and then we're gonna get into fives. Um, right, what was your overall take away on that fight, though, before we do that? Uh... Well, I think it turned out kind of what we were talking about, uh, that it was them just trying to feel out that first round because round two and three had a lot of grappling. Uh, uh, the biggest thing that stood out to me was that single leg, and it's changed my mind on single legs entirely, and I'm going to do nothing but train them for the next so month I, to a month and a half. I really just think that, like, 
people don't do shots in armor and i don't think it's because they we can't i think it's because so much of the game is based around um around bohurt that we like i've i've never told anyone you should like work on a double and like because like trying to get a double without really level change and like you can do it right you see it all the time in mma yes. but like also they can you can drive a lot more you can really get your hands behind in ways that we really yeah. can't um so like i but i feel like because it's hard to sprawl in armor <laughs> so it is but at the same time i think the biggest problem with the shot at least is the distance is different in our sport oh yeah like you can drop double like we we move into a grapple that's and what i'm gonna drop yeah, yeah go yeah. go clinch drop so, get get your double pop up i feel like there's room there i feel like that that there's something there. I don't know though. Um, I haven't seen it. I haven't done it, but it feels yeah. like there's something there. Uh, I think it is. I think there's. I think there's a chance. But you, you're gonna do the single. You didn't fuck the devil. It's all about the single. <laughs> I don't know. That was just. We'll see. I like that one because the dude pressed him into the rail and then he took a single off the rail. I don't think I could drop double off a rail. Yeah. That was more no. like a sneaky little single i don't know i enjoyed it but i was really impressed with that guy's grappling all around uh artem's yeah yeah artem had some fucking some really slick shit um um but i mean i feel like, I feel like there's no way he was not a wrestler <laughs> or sambo or something right yeah because russia um, yeah. this one already looks more active <laughs> i mean they're much smaller oh but... god damn it is, this, is something happening oh <laughs> did i didn't share the fucking thing with you this is my bad okay yeah, that, that's oh I, every new, new, I every new you. video you have to share it uh i haven't figured out a way to switch videos without sharing i'm sure there is i don't know how so i put it in the twitch chat and i can put it in the zoom chat i don't know where you where you're looking i'm, I'm at the zoom i'm right. gonna pull up twitch all right I thought you were going to try to follow the chat. It's it's too many things. Start <laughs> staring at us and yeah, like I can't handle chat and do uh, this I'm real bad. <laughs> oh, hey, stop playing it. All right, you in? Stop yes. You're in. All right, cool. I I love the buckler for fucking pro fights. I love the buckler for everything. I want more buckler fights, dude. I'm so excited that to see buckler like explode kind of right now like yeah. everyone's doing buckler right now well oh. it early on they weren't oh, oh nice, <laughs> nice clean oh but he's got the arm he can't get posture yeah this is there where it is. is this is where i'm telling you like if you can well now he can't no and now you have to say you just and... to... what did you try to knee him from the bottom maybe back up like 10 seconds yeah I think yeah, he did. He definitely <laughs> is. He definitely is. Oh man, I tried to do that on Sean. It did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is why I want that thing we were talking about. 10, 10, more than ten seconds. I feel like if you'd given them another ten seconds to work, he either we were seeing a sweep or we're seeing uh Margellis get uh, top position. Um. Like they were, they neither really had good control at that point. This more goalless has got some slick footwork. The way he's yeah. keeping, like everything's kind of like a little shuffle, but that's so slick. That's that's Ooh! specific. <laughs> Speaking of, sorry, I'm going uh, back to that little fucking yes. little dodge right there. I love it. I just, oh god, yeah, so slick. Um. And apparently and he's pretty transition, good. And his transition is a throw to this guy's really good. Yeah. Well, uh, he's been doing it forever. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, uh, uh, know he was. Uh, he's the guy. Trying to see if he's going to give up on this or he's going to stay right there. I think he's saying, which Not like. a terrible position. I'm wondering if he's going to take him back the other way. Yeah. I was going to say, if he, gets, if he can rotate uh, them off him. that. He's in a fine position, but it's hard to work with when you're on the side of the list like that. Aggressive rush and spooning. Yeah, that's kind of what's happening. Um, 
just love the way this guy keeps his feet with him to set when he sets up combinations. This is it's just something I've been working on and I'm not good at because I came from like a fencing background and so I'm very lunging with my shots. Yeah, which like it's a lot of recovery backwards or I can recover forward, but it's all slow. Like it, it's he just keeps his feet with him so he can always strike. I love it. Very boxing ish. Yeah, which is definitely a better meta in general, I think, for uh I agree. For our pro fights. Um that being said, like uh going back, I, I haven't seen you do uh I mean you're in and out, it is super explosive, so I don't know it doesn't look like a fencing lunge, but I didn't know if it comes from that. But it's 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 yeah. yeah I mean it's definitely uh fencing what's the word? Uh I took a lot from fencing. It yeah. is not a straight fencing launch, but it's very fencing inspired. Yeah. Versus, I swear I saw Sean basically do um, an actual like lunge uh, when I was studying his, and like that was one <laughs> of the things I was like preparing for. I'm like, oh man, he covered a shit ton of range on that. I am. I really <laughs> don't want to let him pick out my range and think that I'm safe. Um, yeah, this uh, Morgolis's grappling is phenomenal. Like. Uh, who is it? Vlasa, uh, whatever that. Vizislod. 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 God, that's that's rough. Vis-a-vol. Um, yeah. So he's doing a great job of defending, but like, there's almost never. Yeah, that was a great takedown. There's almost never a time where he is threatening in the grapple. No. Like he is just trying to keep his feet. I mean, he's just he's losing everywhere. Really, he's um. So that was sick. <laughs> I, have seen multi- I have seen multiple people set this up, and I, I love it. Like uh, The missed punch to the spin? In, into the spin, yes. Yeah. And I've seen some people just straight up throw it like – I've seen them do it like two or three times to the point where I'm like, it's obviously just a combo, and I'm yeah. not even sure they're trying to aim for the punch. Yeah. But like I've seen multiple people now that cross goes past, and they're just like, fuck it, and spin the other way. I really dig it. So – what I I like spin moves are are great because they're fun. Um, I want to see spin move come shield side so that you're landing yeah. with your shield, because like I feel like that's gonna like knock someone off their fucking feet. Like you're yeah. hitting like that. I feel like that's gonna be a, a much better shield punch. It's coming in from the side. They're not it, if you land it. Um, yeah, I've yet to see someone throw it uh, and land it. Um, I throw it all the time I in really, practice. I've never landed it. <laughs> <laughs> so I practiced like uh, the spinning back elbow and yeah. I, I actually like that and enjoy it, but I'm terrified to throw it at force when we're in armor. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm going to bottom it out. My elbow cop out. I'm going to fucking break my guy's elbow. I'm going to look so dumb. Get uh, get I'm articulated. That way you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, get I articulated. Guess. Put a bunch of fucking uh, padding right here. Yeah. <laughs> Um. So this looks like a much more usable visor. Than that yeah, like Artem, that like I got... swear, could not see in that, and maybe that was part no. of his cardio. Like I don't <laughs> think helms are that bad on breathing, but like a really bad helm can make the difference. I love seeing helms like his that are like so sported that you're like, there's there's more holes than metal <laughs> in the front of that. Nice. Oh! oh! Yeah, nice! That reversal is sick. Does it throw some knees from here? What? Yeah, I don't know why people don't throw some from knees. There yes, is. there we there go. Is. He's looking to get that, power on it is what it yeah. looks like. But I, you can just, as long as you get weight on one, you can just lift it up and, and get, then and get points. It's plenty. It's plenty of space. Yeah, just get your points. Um, so for a dude who's using a lighter shield and giving up range, I like, he's not using his fucking buckler, and like, it's 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 really bothering are, me. Are bucklers lighter? <laughs> if your if yours isn't, why are you using it? Mine is lighter than I, almost but- every punch shield I've ever used. What what's your buckler weigh? I don't know. I don't actually weigh. It. It's just lighter than punch shields that I picked up. Okay. I thought bucklers normally weighed like five six pounds, which is heavier than the shield I use. I mean, I use I, for pro fights. I use a a pro fight tournament shield, like yeah. the ones that I make are specifically right. for pro fights. If I <laughs> block an axe with it, it's going to break. 
But um, I mean, it it may end up being, but still, regardless, it's going to be like the advantage you get from a buckler is that it's a little bit more maneuverable. You can get in, absolutely. and if you're not punching with it, you you you've wasted it. You're not using the tool. Like you should yeah. have taken a fucking punch shield. You have. I, yeah, I also like that when you're in tight, it feels like it's easier to land punches that will score yes. than with a punch shield. A hundred percent. But he's. He I haven't seen him throw anything in tight i haven't seen him really work it at, at range he's just yeah i'm i'm just it's making me sad because i it makes me feel like this is people are gonna continue to go ah bucklers are useless and i don't i think there's a th- something there but maybe i'm just maybe i just well, like they, them <laughs> they also definitely hit way harder because it's a thin metal edge with a metal handle oh love it love the duck this guy's, this guy's coming alive a little bit yeah oh that was the spinning back elbow yeah but he gave he it up oh what <laughs> uh, i didn't get anywhere with it also aren't we literally explicitly forbidden from doing suplexes no so it, it's written real weird like you can suplex you cannot throw an opponent in a way that they could only land on their head uh, uh, which, okay. which yes, if you Ooh. if you do a bridge, if you bridge the suplex, oh man, that that whole sequence right there. Yeah, back that up a little bit. Back yeah. Um. Sweet. It, he just had it low. I thought he saw did, the kick. Did the guy didn't. catch? He his catches the foot. Kick. He did catch yeah. it. I couldn't tell if it stuck on something or if he actually caught it. it so. I mean, let's let's go slow mo. I don't know if it's gonna go slow mo on you, so you may want to just change it yourself. I'm going half speed. I think let's it will. Find out. Did it slow down on your end? Fuck no, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it lands, and then as it lands, yeah, he he's it. already like scooping in. So like, he he didn't see it coming in time to catch it, but he because he had the good position, like that's still sweet reactions. Uh, but he would, isn't able to keep it. Well, I don't know why he. It didn't look like he had to let it go. Yeah. Regardless, though, and then just transitioning into this into this throw there is fucking. Yeah, it's so an interesting. It's an interesting one. That guy just, I think he got too excited about the kick and overpressed because that throw actually technically wasn't all that great. But no, it's you don't need to. You just grab a dude and fling him. It was the the technique. What's impressive about it is picking up that oh you're off balance i can make this happen yes. right like yep. it's just feeling that like that's what's impressive getting the timing on it um yeah there was no like he didn't use his legs which is kind of in itself impressive <laughs> right like it's just i overbalanced you from the top i always love watching someone like try to cockily duck and then just take a shot <laughs> <to the dome. laughs> oh. I hate Oops. it because I'm usually that's usually me. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, this one, this round was definitely a lot closer. But uh, I was really surprised that guy did so much better grappling this round that I almost wondered if he like rope a doped the first round and just tried to wear him out. No way. I I think you're probably right. Uh, Cause like because he would have had better defensive grappling. I feel like. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, see, I guess weapon grabbing was at least legal here, too, because he's definitely gripping his weapon to get that. Yeah. I – this, to me, like, I guess he he can – like, he doesn't land on his head, but – Right. No, that was completely legal. Technically, yeah. if you, like, can – if you can full bridge so you drop them on their head, it is legal. I mean, I don't even know but, why we have a rule for that because who the fuck can do that? Right. But also, <laughs> if, I, if I hip throw you and you come down on your head, I don't think it's illegal. Because that's not a throw that, like it says specifically, throw, like you can score for putting them on their neck or something, but it says, but it says throws that like they can only fall on their head are illegal. So like, I think that if I tried to hit throw you and we both fell and you went down on your head, it would not be illegal. That's a very, like like a pile driver would be illegal because I'm like, IMCF is supposed to be the one that has the shitty fucking hard to interpret rules. <laughs> I don't know. I think some of it is just like them being like, look, ref, 
if someone is purposely doing this, it's a problem. If it's a fight and some dude falls on his head, it's not a problem. So every, like, Morgalis is basically not blocking the straight, oh, now he's he's got his guard up. But every time he puts his shield down, he's basically not blocking the straight on side. Um, and I don't know why uh, Visivolod isn't just, oh, your shield's down, I'm going to score. Your shield's down, I'm going to score. Um, when he gets it up, obviously. And that's, but then he throws it while his shield's up. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Up. He was scoring quite a few earlier. I was. He, I do that a lot and then cross block, but I didn't see Morgolis doing it. Morgolis isn't. So. He, v- Visivlod is though. Like he's, his sword blocks are great. In fact, I've seen more sword blocks than buckler blocks. Yeah. Um. See, I don't know right here while he why he's not throwing punches with the buckler. Like, because at this point he he was trapped inside. Now he could be though. But he, but he he wasn't in the first place. Like the dude did get an overhook after a second. Oh yeah, that's that's. Oh, it gets a little bit of a reverse. You can get there. You can get out. You can get out. Yeah. That's, right, no that's one's not gonna bad. do anything from there. Yeah. <laughs> he at least stopped the after points, but that's still. But yeah, three points for the takedown. Yeah, you're right. Like he's not he's not landing in tight, and that's the whole point is that you can land in tight with a buckler. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 one of it's what the main reason, and like he has a nice strapped buckler too, where like he can throw yeah. and it'll have the same power. Maybe not the same power, but like close to possibly more because, like you said, it it has the thinner edge. Yeah, I'm a. I'm excited. I've got one to start playing with. I'm excited about it. For the longest time, I couldn't oh. wait to use it because I had a... That looks painful. I had uh, titanium bracers that were like... Uh, they were my duels bracers. And then at some point, I decided I didn't like my arms being heavy, so I never took them off. But like, I got hit with a half and it folded them in half one time. They they were awful. I just always just hoped that I didn't get hit in the arm. And I thought if I used a buckler, I would just fuck up the block one time and take it to the forearm. Yeah. I mean, as a person who uses the buckler, most of the time I'm blocking with my forearm. Yeah, so now I, <laughs> I just got, now I just got steel bracers, and I'm very excited to start playing with my uh, nice, nice with my buckler. Good. Buckler's fun, man. I I also think it's better for. Uh, this is the thing you were talking about. Only it's a sword instead of. A <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the times where it's almost okay because he was in a real bad position, and that hug sometimes just eliminates. Yeah, but then Morgalis did the same thing, and they were both stuck. It's just yeah, yeah it's gross. Also, it's not quite as good. And in... ooh, that was a nice stick. It's not quite as good as. In pro fights no. the thing in melee is, is if i'm in a good position and then you hug the shit out of me like i have to deal with the suicide attempt and i'm like i really need it Ooh, Ooh, that was nice oh and he trapped oh, the arm he, Damn. Know, yeah the trap was real good you know what i don't know why he let his i don't know if he knew what was happening Morgulis picked his head it looked like he picked his head up and let the guy get his sword free like, all right. So he's got his sword trap, which yeah. is one of the annoying things that happens in pro fights a lot. But in a second, I don't. Yeah, maybe not. I don't think he let. I don't think he let. I think the guy just pulled his just head. Pulled up. it up. You're right. You're right. Yeah. It looked a little different. No time. idea. That was dope, That's though. An, that was a really good fight. So. Yeah. The main thing I'm taking away this like uh Visivolod I don't know. Um basically didn't throw he threw like one or two shot combos and like it was his didn't really transition into the things. Morgalis, despite having a heavier sword, is constantly throwing combos, constantly going one, two, oh let me go for the that third yeah. punch. Um or one, two, let me try to get that dominant overhook position. And he's he's working everywhere. He's throwing knees now that he's in the clinch. Um, I don't know if either of those actually managed to land on flesh, but if they did, it, it looked like it did. Yeah. It I will tell you one of the things I always hate about pro fights is one of the reasons I prefer two minute rounds is that like you see even the highest in guys wear out so much. Like uh, this, Morgolis is his footwork the first round was some of the best footwork i've seen in pro fighting and by like mid second round it was gone yeah 
Yeah, that that's definitely one of the things that uh, I'm about for, for for the five two minutes is you get like you're fresher longer, um, and the end of each round is is bad. By the end of that last round, you're yeah, of course. Yeah, for a long time I was uh, very against the five two minutes, but I've kind of come around to it because I I thought about it a different way. So for the longest time, it was described to me as it was three two minutes. But if the scores came in and it was tied on one, or like if the scores came in and one person decided that one round was different, then they would go to five instead. And so I, it's I hated the idea of not knowing how long a round, or like a fight went. So it it was, and I think it even might still be. Like I don't. What what happened is we uh, there we start we early on discovered that there were a bunch of fights where there was no point of going all five rounds. At, by the end of the third round, you knew who was going to win. And we were, but like, but knockouts were so rare for us. And we weren't at the point where people were getting beaten enough to like quit or exhaust or whatever. We, it was just, but it was just kind of a pointless beating at that point. Um, And like the, the whole thing, like the whole reason we went with shorter rounds was we wanted to have high pace, exciting fights. Yeah. So that's the opposite. So we came up with this idea of if every ref, scores it 10 something to one fighter for mm-hmm. all three rounds we just cut it early it's it, that's a tko um and yeah that does suck not knowing whether you're gonna go to that next round or not um yeah. like i've definitely uh had a couple of fights like where i was like hey should i blow it all in this third round and try to seal it up or not and like making that choice gets real hard but it's also that's kind of there's a fun fun might not be the right word there's an interesting tactical uh thing to that um yeah that said i don't think it's necessary anymore i we, i've seen enough people quit i've seen enough maybe not knockouts but like brownouts where i've stopped things in the ref where one dude is just beating the shit out of another and you're just been like nope we don't need to we don't need to have this happen yeah. Yeah. um so like I think that problem has now solved itself and maybe we may need to bring it back later. Um, so I hope it's gone away, but I'm also no longer on the committee, so I don't make any decisions. So, right but yeah, I, I understand why. Um, but I think it's, I think it might be just fives now, just five rounds. Uh, I was also going to ask what are takedowns worth? And they're not, the it's tends to, it's, I mean, they're worth dominance, right? Okay. It's, it's a it's a ten point must. So um, what are you scoring on? So in order, it is weapon strikes, then uh, then all non weapon strikes. Um, so like it's a hierarchical order. That said, okay. if you blow my head back with a shield punch and I tap you with a sword, the blowing my head back with a shield punch is is more important. But it's if you're just kind of if you're t- if you're hitting me, you're not really like rocking me with a punch, and I'm just hitting you with a sword. The sword is worth more because we want to encourage weapon strikes. The okay. whole the whole point is we're we're fighting with weapons. Let's see weapons be used. And in general, non weapons. Do you think if you made shield punches worth the same as swords, they would stop swinging the sword? They wouldn't stop, but they'd do it less. It's okay. it is shield strike in general your weapon is your actually least effective weapon <laughs> it, it definitely is yeah. <laughs> um like uh in general but it's also your longest range weapon it's, so you yeah. use it a lot until you you close yeah it's a it's a nice jab but also because um it doesn't have the real like stopping power like of a stiff jab you can stop someone from coming in mm-hmm. because a, a sword at me tapping with a sword doesn't stop you it doesn't right. actually really work like a jab so so to continue making it more uh, valuable, like that's one of the things that that we've done, and I, I personally really like it. Maybe because I was helpful in writing the rules, but I might be biased. Um, but yeah, so it's the then it, I believe after that is grappling, um, which would include throws. Um, so, but like dominance in the clinch is also considered. Um, okay. And then uh, and so and when you look at throws landing in dominant position is also considered so if you start the throw but i land right. in dominant position yeah. that is considered and while not officially considered it definitely is 
like in my experience judges will call it the first person to stand up also is (laughs) kind (laughs) of gets something out of it um right right then then it's uh then i think it's ring control then i think it's aggression um so like if um i'm backing away but clearly like in control and like circling around and you aren't able to close the fact that you're more aggressive should not make it so that you are getting point more points on that or or should not be taken that said if we're both kind of sitting you know and one person is clearly pushing the action we want to reward that so mostly we tried to steal as much as we could from ufc because they seem to be very successful yeah i dig it (laughs) um all right so uh i need to share this one with you uh this is bear paw versus old franz from Dynamo. Um, that's not the right window. Did you get it? Yeah. Right. This is Boo Hurt Prime, not Dynamo. You're right. I mean, I I like Boo Hurt Prime. It was. I thought this. I thought this was from Dynamo, but I messed it up. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's all good. <laughs> um. We actually see a halberd out there. I'm kind of surprised. Uh, old friends as one of the top powerers in the world on their team. He's that guy right there. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna blank on his name, but he won the gold and pole arm and then like the next two people who won gold and pole arm were his students oh so jesus he's, he's really well known he put out a really good video on power generation for halberds oh if you can find it you should link that in the in the chitty chat oh which you're not in so you can't do that it's this is true i can send <laughs> it to you at some point oh bear paw just kind of murdered them yeah which is not uncommon. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. really unexpected. Um, this, they're, so they're like they're trying to do old friends. Is I think they're trying to make stuff happen. So they're doing some like, like when you look in the very beginning here. Or here I'll just back this up. Yeah. Like from like a world meta sort of thing. The dude on the red who's like one or t- two in the guy who's. I guess there's three people in the middle of the field, that middle dude. It's really uncommon for to see, like, in most of the world, that person played that far off of his rail guy. Uh, yeah, just because yeah, his yeah. rail guy can just get two on one and mauled a little bit. Yeah. Um, which is what happens a lot. But I think this guy is just trying to give different looks because he realizes that if they just meet head up normal, they're probably not going to win it. Maybe. I mean, it's, I'm not really sure what he's going with it there because especially as he comes into the middle, he leaves that gap open and just and like it didn't do anything about it. So he's right, leaving a gap. It. Yeah, he's leaving. It. Yeah. So either the two on one can happen or he can come and fuck up anyone on the other side, and he just reacts to it. So it's not. I don't know what he was trying for with that, with that uh, look. Um, Maybe just hoping that he gets someone to be dumb and give them their back. Yeah. And then eventually he gets to someone's back. But this is the big part about the rail meta that's so important is that, like, having people free, if you are good at staying on the rail, it's so much less powerful. Yeah. Um, because checks aren't available. Like, the yeah. worst case scenario, you get a blindsight hit, like, from an axe that you didn't see coming. And those can suck badly because the hits you don't see coming always suck horribly. Right, but, but you uh, you can't uh, be just like taken out for, by a blind side. The thing yeah. that uh, all right. So, what are your thoughts? Clearly, um, the his arm is here is super exposed, and he can just start teeing off on it, but he doesn't, and that never seems to be what people do. Like, oh, I, I, so you will see it quite a bit if you watch this. It's kind of a common thing. A lot of people just will sit through it. A lot of their armor is good enough. Yeah. One of the one of the cooler things I ever saw, like I sent a clip of it 
to some of my friends just because I was like, dude, look at this shit. Like the most boss thing was a guy uh, in Who Hurt Next had his hand on a rail and a halberder comes up and just chops him straight in the forearm. The guy's looking at the halberder, doesn't fucking move. Halberder comes back, hits it again, comes back, hits it again, pauses for a second and leaves. And the guy never moved at all. And I'm like, that is some, that's. And then later he. I had, I had nothing. Yeah, exactly. had to. Re- <laughs> and then he went to the hospital because uh, all of his bones were broken. That, uh, that happened at Carnage when we were fighting PK. There's a guy who just got, uh, like, fucking, we just beat the shit out of him. He's like, nah, I'm not going down. And then yeah. afterwards he was like, I couldn't sit for the next, like, three days. It was like. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we, that happened to someone at PK this, this year. Well. This was this was a new fighter this year. I know. I, I felt very bad for him. I um, I this is again coming chapter matches that this doesn't that doesn't work in chapter matches. Yeah. <laughs> you can only you can only HP out of it so many times before you can't. Um. Yeah, that's so right. that's why I like it. We're, All right, we're about to have our first chapter match. That is the the Knights Hall style chapter match. I'm interested to see how it goes. The four quarters. Yeah. Who are you fighting? Uh, I uh, I'm not fighting, but uh, who's the fighting, team fighting? We're fighting Houston. Okay. Um, so they're gonna fight our B team or like like our newer guys. They won't fight our our main vets. Right. Um, like a mix but, of of black and white or like straight uh, Warlords black. So it'll be a mix of black and white. It'll be mainly black. Okay. Um, so it should be fun. Like a couple of the people who are on white, but who have only been in the game for like a year and a half. Right. I still am putting them but, on there. Because but they, like you, Craig, Brennan, all out. Yeah. Yeah. None of us will be on it. So we'll just be supporting. So I'm interested to see how it goes. Uh, it's, it's good. It's super fun. Duels all of a sudden matter so much more, which I fucking love. I, I I do too. We had this whole conversation about God. I wish I wish duels always mattered slightly because it is especially from like a team that really focuses on Booher right on the melees. But we have duelists at our club, and it's sometimes so hard to make sure we're making space for them. Yep. Yeah. Um, that was the problem we had, and that's. Yep the whole like the whole point of trying to solve that it's like yes you I have you have people who just want to do duels how do you get them involved in the team right because like they can be involved and do stuff and have fun but like it's better when it's when it's one cohesive unit all right we're gonna watch this again uh actually they just kicked their asses super hard we don't yeah. need to watch them again <laughs> Uh, I will tell you, you were asking about those shots to the arm. Yeah. What I thought was really interesting is a long time ago, I was watching a video by uh, Sergei Ukolov. Um, and for people who don't know, he's on Bayard and he's a phenomenal fighter. He like, uh, he's, was considered the top singles fighter, hands down, for when I came into the sport for years. Yeah, like he, he was like undefeated in pro fights for like, over a decade or something insane yeah and Um, like and was always uh like you know always at the near of the top of the triathlon could smoke people in every format um yeah um but anyway he was giving this uh like how to pick your one-handed weapon for boohurt and he went over like the strengths and weaknesses of each being falchion uh axe he didn't even go over mace because we all know yeah (laughs) (laughs) uh Ugh. falchion mace and then specifically the falchion with the thorn right with yeah. the, the pointy end but one of the things he said there that like at the time i had no idea and it changed my mind about a lot of what i thought i knew was he said falchions are best for hitting hard armor and so like he would specifically like the big thing was not gapping with falchions it was finding things like the elbow cop the van brace the rear brace hard armor and chopping the shit out of it um and honestly learning to target those things completely changed my mind for a long time because for the longest time i was like look guys it's a it's a one-handed falchion you hit a gap or they don't know you're there essentially um 
And it turns out, it, as long as you, you hit hard armor close to the body, you can really transfer a decent amount of force sure. uh, with one-handers. Especially with those with those points. And, like, I also like targeting um i mean this is another shitty dirty trick uh targeting articulation because if you can break someone's articulation um you you know best case scenario put them out for the day but at least their arm doesn't work as well for that that round the next round um yeah uh for a while um cat was targeting rivets because if you hit rivets you can shear them turns out that's well, technically illegal a little illegal technically but, you know. yeah we we stopped when we realized it was technically illegal <laughs> i I feel like that shouldn't be technically illegal. I feel like that should be legal. It's not, you're not pulling their like armor off. You're it not pulling their it, armor off. So here's the thing, but it doesn't make the game better in any way. It means you use your weapons more. Using weapons more makes the game better. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I think so, because, like, the whole point of this is fighting with weapons, but... Um, I'm saying that Yes, but if you do it to try to like specifically make it so someone is no longer allowed to fight through damaging their gear, like, uh, like I'm fine if you're just gonna chop the I mean, shit out of them. But like you are wait, so are you saying that like me if hitting I, their their articulation if, is also bad? No, no, I'm actually fine with that because that's what it's designed to take, and if it can't handle it, it can't handle it. Like. If you swing your weapon hard into someone's armor and their armor folds and doesn't work anymore, way to go, you're badass. Uh, <laughs> the the game. So wait, but, but being I, able to target a tiny... Shearing someone's rivet is a whole bunch like uh, me taking a one-handed weapon and hooking it under a leather strap and then going, twisting and trying to break it off. I disagree because... Uh, same thing to me. Because one of those is using the weapon as the weapon is intended which is striking. I guarantee you there are plenty of things where they're like, yeah, take the axe, just rip off their armor. I mean, I bet you there's treatises somewhere. Sure, probably. But like, that's <laughs> lit that's not what it's intended use is. It's you using it off. It's an off label use, right? The physician prescribed it for ADD, but you used it for depression, right? Like, <laughs> uh, so I, I think that striking, like being able to strike a tiny surface at the right angle that causes a shearing is, like, I could never do it. I tried and couldn't do it. And, like, Kat was doing it, I mean, not often, but, like, occasionally. Um, and then we, were, we found out, oh, hey, that's not cool and stopped doing it. But I mean, honestly, you could also just do it and no one would ever know. Like you would yeah. never get called for it. Yeah, uh, but also, that's it, sh that's shitty. <laughs> I mean, I get annoyed when like someone has to go down because they lose a piece of armor, or the the worst ones are like your shoulder strap came unhooked here, so it's flopping around or something, and they're like they'll try to set you, and I'm just like, I'm fine. It's okay. Like it can flop. Uh, it just. It doesn't feel good when, like, oh, I can't fight anymore because my armor broke. I, I agree. Thank you for the follow, Testicles. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I agree. That um, that is... I know that guy. He's a foam fighter. Oh, all right. Is he good? He's all right. He's, He's trash solid. talk. It's time to tell him to say no. <laughs> um, He's above average. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the... Um, you're right, and particularly as someone who does more of the chapter matches, that's less of a concern, because, like, I just go fix it the next time, right? Yeah. And in, when you're talking about doing, you know, your team might be out because of this armor failure, it's a lot shittier. Um, and so that, that definitely changes things. And it's also a reason why I don't, again, why I like the chapter match system better. Because, like, even without people doing it on purposely, that's still just a, such a shitty way to lose a round. Um, yeah. I love the chapter match from a uh, from a one on one standpoint. I don't like it from like like we need to have large tournaments and uh, I mean I don't like we, it from that. We no one's tried a true chapter match tournament as opposed to like a four four person chapter war. I I, I think it's doable, um, and I really hope someone tries it this year. And I think the Atlantic region is plenty. I'm sending you the link to this. Let's watch this one. Let's do um, it. But yeah, so I, I think it could work. I I think you can do a chapter match 
um, tournament. Just if you change it to be, oh hey, we don't want to hear them talking. Um, if you change it to be to, oh, I want I want to just show just real yeah. quick. Yeah, 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 this is the first time I've ever seen on the international stage someone use a tiny oh, no. little axe like y'all do. <laughs> And I pause you. The French ninja, y'all, y'all converted him, I guess. Are you? <laughs> so he, which sucks, because he, I've never seen him be effective with weapons ever. <laughs> <laughs> he, he drops one person in this tournament with it, uh, nice. real good. He's got it, dude. He, I don't know if he'll do it this, but I watched him do this a bunch of times, and it was one of the most interesting strikes. Is he would go run to where he was going to strike. And as he got to the rail, he would spin around to check to see if anyone was behind him, but he would use that spin to go into his strike. So he basically was, was like spinning at yeah. striking yeah. when he would come in with the spin uh, to see who was following him. It was really interesting. I think Brandon actually does that. Really? Um, yeah. Like he'll like fall like he's falling back against the list as he throws um oh, nice i don't know if it's there, that right, right there. there yeah that was it i don't know if he actually does it to uh check for the list or if it's just he's running and needs to stop himself. <laughs> um so i i don't th see why uh aquilina like just doesn't why they're guys that don't like back out like why are they fighting White Company on the rails when White Company is like one of the best and outsizes them? <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a lot harder to do that than you might think. Like lots of people are like, just right. don't go to the rails. No, I mean, but look, okay. he's got the overhook position right here, and he's not being held. He can just let go and leave. He can okay, he but, can do it. Also, this guy's the one person who's actually in a good position because now he's got his striker coming up to hit him, and they got a chance. But yes, I agree. He could technically leave. If the guy lets him, but he's in a no, position, he, he, he can leave. He's not. He was I mean, not. Now he can't. Nah, but, no. Yeah. Um. But like that's the thing is he had, and now he can again. And like this guy can leave too. They can get out, and then they can make it an open field where they have the best, possibly the best open field player in the game. Right. He's being shut down right now because they're letting White Company play them on the rail. Um. I don't know that he's. I don't think he's as good as like Max Yin or something, but he's. I said possibly. I said right. possibly. Right. I I walked it back. I walked it back. <laughs> um, and particularly I, uh, because I don't think he has anything else. Um, I don't think he is. Uh, like I think he's only good in the open field. I haven't seen him do anything he, else really good. He's definitely like a absolute badass against lower end teams. Ooh, there's but the arms. Anytime. Anytime I see him against real high ends, he gets beat up a bit. But you know, it's it's rough because he is lighter than the guys, and like yeah. when skill matches being lighter is rough. Oh yeah, size size fucking matters. Uh, yeah, I hate it. I hate being <laughs> small in this sport. It's terrible. But like that's my the thing is I I I understand also your point that like they white company doesn't want to let them leave, so they're not going to make it easy. But they don't even seem to be trying to, and that's. Um, good night, Julie. Night, uh, Chris. Thanks for tuning in. Um, oh man, it's late. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they just kind of let them stay on the rail. Like they're not being forced to stay on the rail. They just do it, and and that's it's one of the things that I complain about. Um, and in particular against this team, that seems like a really bad choice. Cause yeah, cause that's where they're really really good. And honestly, it's, it's against all of the high-end teams. It's where they're really good. But I, I will admit, I, White Company was the first that seemed to, like, really show how good this, like, very slow, grinding rail yeah. game was so powerful. Also, I don't know that White Company is good else, like, really good in the open field. Like, partisan, you can't be like, I'm going to fight you in the open field and be better than you. <laughs> White Company, I think you can do that. Um, I mean, like... Not every team, but a high-level team like this probably can. Um. And so the problem is, so when I talk, if we pause it real quick, yeah. did that pause it for you? Yeah. 
Okay, so a lot of problems with not fighting someone on the rail comes from, I think, the initial engagement. And I feel like it is so important to set a position on the rail in the initial engagement, because if you don't, you literally just let them surround you. And then it's, yeah, you could, you could pull something out. But that's so hard if you have to, if you have people on both sides of you always, like you can't look one way to see them. So like you have to set the rail in the beginning, in my opinion. And then it's hard to be like, well, when or how do you get off the rail? I mean, it's, it's definitely hard to figure that out. And like, but then also like we, you, you can say that, but if you never do it, right, they didn't try. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I, well, I don't have evidence that you can in fact give up the rail. I would bet you can. I would bet that that's super doable. Um, you definitely can. No, can, and, can yes. I mean, like you can and be be effective. Um, so if if my let's go back to the opening of this so that we can see. Um, like yeah, it'll just like. jump straight into it. Uh, all right, so we can kind of see if yeah, the, the two guys on the right um, shift in. So so they're right on their the pivots um shoulder so you so they basically just give up their uh what do you call pivot the center yeah okay i'm trying to get rid of center because of the old fucking um designation for center being the guy in the rail which is a dumb designation don't get me wrong it really is but like Um, there's a there's still a league that i guarantee does it and there's a bunch of old people like me who will always like go back and forth and I just, yeah. if we just get rid of that for everything, it'll be better. Pivot, uh, pivot's a great one. Third man's a great one. I'm so gonna... I've, yeah, I've gone entirely to one, two, three. The okay. one position's on the rail, two's in, three's the middle. Right. And so that's it. And then I'll call, every team has their own shit that they call it. We call it the initiator, exploiter, and center. Yeah. I don't care. But like, if we can just universally be like one, two, three, and like- then. Your team can call it whatever you want. So I would like we go from from left to right, fi- like the team you're facing. It would be one, two, three, four, five. Start on the left, go across. No, one, two, three, two, one. No, because it's the ones no, and the twos, and you can go why, left no, 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 side. No, no, no. Right. Be- okay, if you if you're gonna say left one, right one, but like yeah. you can just say the fourth man, and we if we all know the fourth man is the fourth man over from the left. So for me, the one's positions on both sides is the same. The two position on both sides is the same. Now you can play it different ways. And if you need to like delineate the difference between the two, then you go like the left side two position or the I right mean, side two position. But yeah, it there they I mean there is no inherent thing that makes the left two uh different than the right two. Um that though they can definitely be played differently right absolutely. Um, and and usually i would imagine most teams do play them differently just because you're not likely to have the same the same matchups on both sides um but also just when talking about it it gives you i think it gives you a little bit easier to uh, regardless we'll go with that so uh if the um right one and two join the third third man and then let's say we keep uh the one and two on the left actually by the left um on that rail um that allows white company to push deep on the rail. But if they do that, that leaves that hole right here between white company's third and they're either their third and their two or their third and their one. I'm fine with that. You can take the backfield if I'm on the rail. Sure, that's you are fine with that. And white company might be fine with that too. But that allows uh Aqu- Aquia, Aquilia, I don't know how it's pronounced. But... Uh, Achilles Aquania. Uh, Come on. Achilles Aquania. Aquilius. Um uh, that leaves Aquilius to, um, man, I can't fucking do it. A- a- I'm not gonna. A- nope. At no. least that lets France. <laughs> that lets France. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, lets them run into the backfield and then continue to, to move and not get engaged. As long as they're continually moving, they it is very hard for them to get engaged. But you've already said that you're going to keep the left two on the rail. So these two people are just going to keep circling around and then I'm just going to have a four on two and I'm going to tell my center to You're not they they so they're not going to send all four dudes there to start. And if they do, that's fine. If, if, they, they, move out of, if they move out of the way, I'm going to take it all to that rail. And, and oh, that's just, fine. If they field. if they send all four dudes there to start, if they're if they're walking all the way along the rail, the two that are still on the rail can just come off the rail to the middle, 
And if they try to cut across the middle, they're opening up their backs to get caught on a cross. So, like, you can still keep... No, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to take it to the rail, but if the two on that rail step off, now I've got people on both sides of them, and now the check actually works. If they're on the rail, the check doesn't work. If you step off the rail, I'm behind the, you're you. You're right. The, the, check, the check works, and they, they... But now you're playing a game in the middle, and if you're the team that's better at running you'll probably do better at it. Even though they're they are making moves from both sides, it's actually pretty easy to keep track of where people are. So if you can create the chaos and get someone to buy into it and you are better at the chaos, I definitely agree that there's a chance to win. The problem is, is as long as you give them rails side and you play to the center, you're already you're always in a worse starting position to play that game now if you just drill it a whole bunch maybe you get to the point where you can outplay them but because you're letting them start surrounding start with you surrounded you can't go to the rail because if you go to the rail i don't so i don't think i don't think it's worse because you have more options in where you run so especially because we are so slow in armor by the time you are starting to move to me, I can choose to go left, I can choose to go right, I can choose to go forward, I can choose to go backwards. You can only choose to come at me in one that's, direction. That's, a, that's assuming you know I'm coming at you. But I, sh- I will. I'm, I'm, I'm surrounding you. It's it's really easy to keep track five dudes. Tracking five dudes is not hard. So if you were playing center and always let them be on either side of you, it's pretty difficult. I, it's not impossible. I have never had trouble tracking all five dudes. Um, when I was moving, I've had trouble tracking all five dudes when I'm working on the rail and I have to actually work a grapple and focus on that one thing. So are you, what, are you moving? Like, yes. So I'm imagining like you got a circle of people and then this is the team sitting inside because they yeah, don't no, want to be on the I mean, rails. if you're playing open field, you need to be moving. You can't stand. You have to move. So what if we just stand and watch y'all? That's fine. You're just gonna run in circles. No, we just we'll walk, we'll go slow. You can still move. You just move slow. All right. I I'm I'm interested to see it. I, yeah. I mean, we'll never see it. We won't. It's yeah, never gonna happen. <laughs> right. Uh, um. But I would like to at the very least see. Uh. I would like to see people play off a rail. Leave one rail open. I think you could leave both. Um. I. Just I, don't think I feel like there are there's good room to play with trick plays for bad matchups. Yeah. Right. Um, like I, I do agree that if I go against Bear Paw and just meet them on, I'm gonna meet them on the rail because that's my game too, and I'm gonna have fun. But like, if I really want to win, there's a good chance I should probably try some crazy shit, right? And just see if I can sneak something. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Here, but here's another thing: talking about the the rail idea and, and the focus on it, right? So we don't exactly know where the center is. I mean, where the fucking third man is. <sighs> Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm cool with both of them. <laughs> yeah, I know you're cool. I'm trying to get rid of it because of that that same thing. So, right, so we see uh, Aquila's um, third man here, uh, but we don't see uh, White Company's third man. But he's he's approximately in the same position um, based on what it was. He could have drifted a little to the left side yeah. of the field. Maybe he's a little to the right. Regardless, that means there's at least a five foot gap right here. And instead, he's going to try to throw at a guy who's bigger than him, who's probably stronger than him, who has good position on the rail. Instead of and like his buddy right here is safe. Uh, this guy can come and support. It's not going to turn to a two on one. And also, it takes it's going to take this guy a while to get there. Throw so that I will, shot. And I will leave. tell you real quick exactly what because we we drilled this exact situation. I'll tell you exactly what we do, yeah. and then you can decide what you how you feel about it. Right. All right. So let's say this guy does not shoot here. He shoots the gap. He runs. Yeah. Okay. So we immediately call flank. Our center is going to float to the other side, the two positions on the other side, and they're going to cover their back position, right? Just so the guy can't like check them from behind or something dumb happens. This person who's standing closest to us is going to immediately push to the other side and initiate a two-on-one against that dude. Yeah. If their center floats down, I'm totally happy with it. We we're two on two. It's two on two on the rail. Yeah. I'm happy with it. Yeah. If he doesn't float down, then I'm going to try to eat that guy alive and then we'll keep moving. I mean, you, you're, you're right. There's obviously a counter to the play. The, but the point is, this is a bad matchup. Why are you staying in this bad matchup? You, you just, you just lost around terribly because you played this game and you're going right. 
and you're going right back into it, right? Like this would be me trying to punch you on the rail. Why would I ever do that when I can leave? I, I guess. <laughs> I the the question is: Is there a better matchup for you? No, I mean, if is he, there a better matchup for this guy against White? Cotton? Right. So maybe not, but there's a yeah. better position. There's, this is a bad place to have this matchup. If he makes that run and White Company moves away and he doesn't get anything out of it, that's fine. Nothing lost though, because this guy. Because the Aquia's third can keep this to be a two-on-two, two. and in yes. fact, if a white company fucks up on their move to the two to the two-on-one, they do that one that you said, and just yeah. he doesn't adjust quick enough, he can get that guy's the back of this guy's helm, and easily get that takedown. While it's going to be harder for the white company to uh, get the takedown pulling on the back of the Aquia's helm, because he's got someone yanking on his helm, right? So he can't. Uh, and I agree. And I honestly, uh, I teach people if the other person collapses down, pull off and, and deal with it, deal yeah. with your one-on-one and then just kind of, uh, solely affect this, I guess in the end, as long as all five people are off the rail, I feel like you can definitely play some games and things get interesting and maybe a little chaotic. The second I can get one person on the rail, I can have my entire team walk to me and we'll beat the shit out of them. You unless can't, you, you can't. Why? Because uh, while they're walking, they're gonna get checked and fall down. You can't. Uh, you, you can't just. I can track four people. <laughs> it's really easy to track four. You have any idea how easy it is to track four? People? Sure. One one person easier than five people. Right, but you can't. You can't. Five. You can't. You can't walk in one direction and keep yourself safe from four people. You have to be able to move in multiple directions. I can walk down the rail the whole time. Okay. Like it is, it's so easy. And then I can basically be like, we're all going to beat the shit out of this one guy. Would you like to come to the rail and help him? If not, I'll come back to you after we're done here. Okay. I, but as I, long as all five are off the rail. Yes. I, we have to do something and you might trap in chaos. I mean, also if your dudes are walking down there, that's fine. Go, people can go walk as if they're like playing them on the rail sprint free the dude freeing a dude from a grapple is pretty quick easy too like that's the other thing people don't do that people never help their buddies get out of grapples uh I, you help people that's, that's, sur- right. that's fair survive we, I mean, we, maybe we, we, we train it a lot but i definitely to escape it took a while. to escape oh, yes. Yes. or okay yeah when, we, when i was um, down there we were training to reverse not to escape but we, that was also two drills <laughs> so, yeah exactly I, I guess what i will tell you is we will try to free whatever control position they have over you but we're not then being like run away most of the time our person's going to stay in the grapple but then just try to get a better position right. but anytime someone's in a bad position we specifically bra- practice to break their grapple and right. so the person can leave they just normally then go back in. yeah they just normally try to get a better position right yeah yeah and this is it's very very basic stuff right here it looks like you get the one takedown and then go for the slow grind mm-hmm. um, which is is good you can't you also, can't this is this is so random this is like a oh i'm gonna back this up this is kind of like a newbie move in my opinion and i so many people make this mistake and i'm surprised to see it what? on such a high level thing this is you cannot throw someone into the rail so many people will try this where they're tripping but like the person's at the rail like so if we start it here who's there's talking no way about? he ever goes down who are we uh, talking about? Not, I'm moving stuff around. I'm guessing you're not seeing me moving. I'm at 411. Uh, let's get it to the spot. Um, go to like 404 maybe? Yeah, yeah. Who, just who are we talking about? There's three people. The this, people... this throw right here. Uh, oh, I didn't see his leg move. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, that throw, lots of people try it, but uh, I mean, if anyone's watching don't throw someone into the rail you have to take them the other way that'll ne- never work but uh, yeah it's the same it's the, is your point about people about being safe on the rail and people checking someone into the rail yes like it's yeah exactly i i i'm just like never why just don't do it just literally yeah. just never do it um just kind of strange to see that at this high level yeah well i mean they might all be they might be a mainly open field team so he might not have drilled Hey, yeah. rail work, which would be dumb since they I play. Can't, I can't imagine they haven't drilled the shit out of it. Dude probably will toss me, so <laughs> who knows. 
I mean, that's the same thing there. It's like that that check into two dudes who are braced yeah. against the rail. Um, and and like this he, is, you know, obviously you want him to play it differently, but when I talk about the strength of rail, that's what it is. It's the fact that chaos really struggles to beat it. Right. Beat if you're on the rail. Sure. I mean, well, I mean, let's let's go back to that because it's not just the. I mean, the rail is clearly a point of this, but if we watch. Um, so when number seven is going to try to check number one here, look at his mm -hmm. angle of approach. His angle of approach is coming so that that vector is going straight out the rail. He has time. He can cut that to the side and try yeah. to hit. And it, even if he doesn't knock the guy over, he peels him off his buddy. Instead, and he's definitely, he's definitely got a chance. And he does, he looks like he angles to shoot him into that little gap and just hoping something would happen, but no doubt. He tries. He, he can get to the side. He does, uh, And he can, and he tries to do it at the very end, but he's... But, like, he has a lot more room than he's giving himself. Yeah, if he had taken a little bit of more of a loop, he would have had an angle that may have worked. It right. really might have. Right, and that's the – and and so your point that the rail is super strong and breaks down chaos is true. But also, you have to be dedicated to playing that game, and they're not, right? So you can't say, yeah. we're going to play a chaos game and then continue right. to fight on the rail. It's just like, oh, we're on the rail and give up on it. Um then you're not playing a chaos game. Then you're you're not playing your game. You're playing a shitty rail game. And like I will always agree a shitty rail game is gonna lose to a good rail game. Yeah. <laughs> um So I'm interested. I know a lot of teams that like the chaos. Um I, I really like the idea of seeing new metas. Like I always love seeing people try different stuff. Just so far in all of what like all of the the practice and everything that we've done chaos seems to be easily defeated by uh oh, i can't think of what i'm trying to say uh discipline being disciplined beats chaos most of the time i mean and, you should yeah. it should be disciplined chaos <laughs> um right. so like I, I i agree with that but like you can like there are ways to make it work but also i think we'll see it change a little bit the rail is so powerful here, not just because of that you can grab it, but because you can hook over it. Um, and I think when we see that change to the flat, which I I assume is, I'm going super to, I'm super excited about it. I hope they go with it and keep it. I think that's going to change. I think we're going to see that change a couple of things. All right, um, we're it's been two hours. Um, <laughs> we did not get through half of what I wanted. We didn't even like slow shit down that much. We just talked a lot. Um, uh, last thing I like to do, uh, is give a recommendation, um, try to end on a high note. Do you have anything that you would like to recommend? Can be Bohurt related or not? Oh, recommendation. Like, like you, something, you, something, yeah. um, I'm gonna, uh, recommend, uh, I just played this dope game at Kraken's house this weekend, uh, called Monster Prom. It's a dope dating sim game. It's super, uh, Super funny, really quick to play, cool art. Um, it's like three dollars on Steam. Um, dating Sims are cool. People should play them more. <laughs> mm. um, I'm gonna, I'll, I'm gonna do yours for you. Uh, I'm gonna recommend that video uh, <laughs> with the guy doing the power generation that you said oh, halfway yeah. through. Except we don't yeah. know who it. Except we don't know who it is or where it was. <laughs> Hold on, I can do this. It's H and B Academy. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I bet it's like the first one. I've got this. All right, H &B. pull it up, and we'll have the actual recommendation. All right, it is sending it to you right now. Oh hey, you you changed whatever you did to change it. Uh, the party worked in a way oh. mine never has. Well, uh, there it is. It's that guy. All right. Cool. I'll put it in the chat. Oh, I think this is actually right where he's showing. Like this moment is where he's showing it. So perfect. Also, they've got the. I think this is such a cool belt. Yeah. It's so silly and basic. <laughs> but all right, he's good. Give some good advice on how to generate power. Sweet. Well, that was cool. Thanks for being on. Uh, I think this yeah, was good. Man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks, chat, for being here. Uh, we're going to head out. Peace.